Hey, my name is Quas from NRG, and this is my analysis of EDG versus NB game one from the first day of LPL summer. So in this gank, we see that Kaylin's flash had been forced, and having a Braum in a lane, especially with Lucian, is a really gankable lane for Elysian especially. It has a lot of kill potential, so they commit heavily to this play by Braum flashing just to make sure that he applies his passive proc, and then Lucian also flashing to ensure all of his damage, and generally in competitive play is not a bad thing. If, if three people flash just to secure a kill is generally worth it since a lot of the games don't really have that much action in them. So a really good setup by NB and execution, just going really ham and making sure that there's absolutely no chance of Caitlyn healing and getting sped up by Karma um, out of the gank. Here we have a um, very well executed insect play from Deleeson, just as, as soon as uh, Scout was heading over to the brush, he positions himself with the ward to get a pretty good um, kick before he can even react. If Azir had really good reaction time, or if he pinked the brush before face checking it, then he would have been able to use flash out of it. But since he actually face checked it, he didn't have the reaction time to respond to the ward hop into the ultimate, and then gets hit by the, the guaranteed Q after the kick. So even if Azir managed to get over the wall, he's still gonna get finished off at that. Eh? So in this situation, we have EDG and NB pretty much base racing. Here we have V from NB trying to hold the push on his own, which is a really risky thing to do. And another thing to notice is that Trundle also TP to the play. It's a very curious thing that they decided to play it that way. If they were, I, th I would say that if, were, if they were wanting to commit the teleport to the United the Swain, um, they should have placed it further down the lane. Maybe should have dropped the ward further down the lane and then secured the kill onto this lane. But um, nevertheless, the Trundle TP gets canceled. Um, and the Trundle actually doesn't do anything in this play since he can't really do anything on the top side of the map against the three members from MV. It's a pretty poor teamwork play by MV. I think they could have definitely held the turret if the if Victor had ghosted or just, just walked down to the lane and V had waited for him, they could have definitely both defended a turret since there's too much threat of being bursted down. So definitely a mistake by NB there. Um, pretty poor coordination between the top lane and mid lane there. They do buy some time for their three men to take down the top turret, but they can't really take the inhibitor. So all they get is a turret um, trade, which is pretty much what have been happening. Very, very strange mistakes from these teams. Um, just poor coordination in defending the, the pushes. So here we have EDG pushing down the inner turret from NV, and NV had a really good idea of flanking with the Swain. The mistake comes from Lucian dashes a bit uh, too early into the play and gets chunked out heavily by carries of EDG, and he's forced to flash. So pretty much at the start of the, the fight, uh, ha uh, Lucian's out of the fight, and the rest of the MV members still try to go in and assassinate um, Azir, but um, with the help of Karma, it's really hard to do. And Lee Sin immediately gets popped, followed by the Swain that's trying to get into the fight. And Lucian tries to get some damage in, but immediately dies since he was chunked too hard beforehand. In the end, Swain does manage to pick up a kill on the Azir after flashing after him and going really hard for the kill, but. At this point of the game, Swain is just one before after the fight, and obviously there's not much he can do. Illusion wasn't patient enough to wait for the Swain to flank and cut off the members from EDG, and it went in too early, so he got chunked. And once Illusion's chunked, um, NB shouldn't really fight. It's way too forced to fight with a member that's below 30% HP, but they still um, decide to fight. And um, I think this, this team fight was also pretty key in giving EDG the victory, since um, they just give a, a lot of kills and a lot of pressure off of just miscommunication and overaggression. Here we have a push by EDG onto the middle middle inhibitor turret, um, with Kaylin set up setting up traps on uh, both sides of the turret. At uh, the start of the siege, you, um, you can see the power of Azir into Champion like uh, Swain that's very short range. Um, as he manages to chunk the Swain out to like 40% 40, 40 right before they even contest the turret. 
EDG slowly makes her way into the inhibitor, but being careful of uh, being flanked by the Lee at the same time. Um, they do get a bit too aggressive into fighting NV. A key thing into this team composition is that EDG has the clear range advantage with their carries, whereas NV wants the fights to come to them. And I think EDG got a bit too um, aggressive, especially Scout on the Azir. Get a bit too aggressive and move position too far forward into Envy and got picked off by Swain's damage uh, as well as Victor to the right. And eventually, Envy can't do anything against them since their team composition just um, looks a lot worse in this, uh, in this situation. So they were they were bound to get out sustained either way. They just give up a free kill of, um, on the Azir for no reason really. If they had just taken it slowly, they could have gotten the, the kill for free and just backed off. So in this clip, we have EDG pushing into NB's base. They have triple inhibitors down in favor of EDG. So what basically what they're trying to do is just choke NB in, in their base. So in this situation, the best thing to do for teams is just trying to engage before they can get in a position of get choked down by um, the massive amount of minions coming into the, into the base. So. NB recognizes this and then sets up a Baron with Swain TPing behind them to engage the fight. So they, as the Swain TP is coming in, Braum flashes in with his ultimate, immediately gets uh, killed at this point of the game. Um, I think engages have to be very coordinated to not die uh, too early. Um, in my opinion, the Braum went in a bit too early, but even with the Braum dying, there's a, a major mechanical misplay by Daft, where he sees the Swain coming in with, with his like pretty much home guards, and he doesn't flash right away. And then after Kaylin's dead, they don't really have the DPS to finish off most members of NB, and slowly, without the, the, the threat of the Caitlyn, ADG just gets defeated in the fight. Um, although, with the massive waves that they managed to pile up before the fight, they do take down both uh, Nexus turrets. So it wasn't completely uh, a complete loss by them, but there you see the importance of smart positioning by late game AD carries. So here we have another engage attempt by NMB. Swift is trying to get a insect, tries to alt Trundle into the Caitlyn as he sees them are lined up. In, in his mind, the Trundle will hit the Caitlyn after the kick. But what I, he doesn't take into account is the movement speed bonus from Karma's Mantra E. So Caitlyn uh, is able to quickly move to the left and not get hit by the trundle that's getting kicked into the team. So at this point of the, f the fight, you have a Lee Sin that just kicked their tank into the team. So it's pretty much a useless engage. With that engage from Lee Sin, there was pretty much nothing that Envy could have done. Um, I would have liked to see an engage into the Caitlyn, into the Azir somehow, but relying on to kicking trundles and hoping that the, the, the Trundle body would hit uh, Kaling, I think it was too hopeful for Swift. Overall, I think NB got out comped. NB had no reliable engages, with def which definitely cost them a lot of fights. And EDG picked two very hard scaling, long range carries to abuse um, NB's lack of engage and also short range champions like Swain. Very good draft from EDG. I think that was the. Um, the biggest advantage to have this game was just the draft. That was what put them ahead. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and make sure to check out the website over at lawclass.com.